Thank you and welcome to the show. TV is a great form of escapism. Nothing better than at the end of a long week to tune in and tune out. But before you zone out, before you kick back and relax, I want you to consider some serious things because 200 South Africans will die today from some form of heart disease, which is why we're urging everyone to think red, to think about your heart and take the necessary steps to keep it ticking for longer. See, here's what we know. Heart disease is the number one killer in South Africa. One in three men and one in four women will have a heart condition before the age of 60. What we often don't know is if we're at risk. So today, right now, I'm going to give you a little heart health assessment test that will give you a good indication of whether or not you are at risk. There are eight questions. Give yourself one point for every yes answer. Here goes. Firstly, the risk factors you can't control. Increasing age for men. Are you over the age of 45? For women, are you postmenopausal or over the age of 55? First question. Second question, does anyone in your immediate family have a history of heart disease or diabetes? Now, risk factors that you can control. Do you have diabetes? Do you smoke? Is your blood pressure higher than 140 over 90? If you don't know, give yourself a point. Is your total cholesterol over five? Are you overweight? By that I mean 10 kilograms or more above your recommended weight. And finally, do you exercise less than three times a week? If you scored anything below two, congratulations, you're not at risk. If you scored anything between three and eight, it means you are. I scored three, which means I am at risk. And the danger with that is for every risk factor that you checked, your risk for developing heart disease increases exponentially. Take a look at this graph. If you had three risk factors, you are 10 times more likely to get heart disease than someone with no risk factors at all. Scary thought, isn't it? So for the risk factors you can control, it's important that you take action to minimize your risks. If you have some in the can't control category, it's even more important that you take action on the risks you can control to help you reduce your overall risk for heart disease. So what can you do? Five basic things. Firstly, and we always say this on the show, don't smoke and avoid secondhand smoke. In fact, people who smoke are up to six times more likely to suffer a heart attack than non-smokers. Secondly, aim for a health healthy weight. The more overweight you are, the higher your risk of heart disease. If you don't know your ideal weight, ask your doctor or pharmacist. Thirdly, get moving with 30 minutes of exercise daily. Exercise not only helps improve heart health, it can even reverse some heart disease risk factors. Then know your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and your blood sugar numbers. They're all easily and quickly tested at your local pharmacy. And finally, eat for heart health. From last week, you'll remember the plan. Eat plenty of good fat, minimize saturated fat, and avoid all trans fat. One simple way to do that is to switch from butter a soft margarine. Your heart needs to be strong to keep up. Flora, for a strong heart today. We know that there are many reasons why Marge is a better option when it comes to spreads, but what many of us don't believe is that it's actually safe for us. For many years, myths around margarine have circulated through the grapevine, describing things like margarine being one molecule away from plastic. But experts argue that the only plastic thing about Marge is the container it comes in. What, what's the truth, Crystal? Michael, margarine is not remotely related to plastic. It's actually made from vegetable oils and water. Okay, Very so natural simple. products. All right, to prove that to you, we've asked Wendy to come in and actually make margarine from the products we have on the table. Wendy, what goes into margarine? What are the ingredients? It's really simple, Michael. Basically, what we use is a little bit of sunflower oil, a little bit of palm oil, some milk, and some egg yolk. Okay. Add a little bit of lemon juice, some salt and pepper for flavor, and there you've got it, margarine. Actually, make your margarine at home. Yep. Well, go for it, Wendy. Great. While you do that, Christelle, I mean, this, how do you dispel that myth, one molecule away from plastic? Basically, anything in life can be argued to be one molecule away from something toxic or disagreeable. To give an example, water is one molecule away from hydrogen peroxide. Salt is one molecule away from chlorine gas. It doesn't mean that it's the same thing or that it even has the same uh, properties. So that is just a myth that's been flying around for ages. Nothing truth about it. Okay. What are you doing at the moment, Wendy? So basically, Michael, what I'm doing now is I'm um, whisking my palm oil and my sunflower oil together. I'm waiting for it to reach a sort of a milky color, and then I know it's ready for me to add the milk and the egg yolks to it. Another myth, Christelle, is that the current healthier generation of softer margarines contain loads of trans fats. 
Yeah, that's not true, Michael. Since the 1990s, when we discovered that trans fats are actually bad for your health, companies like Unilever has taken the forefront in actually reducing trans fats and taking it completely out of the product. All right, and this one certainly is trans fat free, is it not, Wendy? Yes, it is. Were well, you ready for your next ingredients, it looks like that? Yes, absolutely. So, Michael, what we've reached here is a lovely milky texture. We're ready to add the milk and the egg yolk. Brilliant. I'm going to do about a teaspoon of egg yolk and a teaspoon of milk. And that is for flavour, I imagine. The egg yolk contains a protein called lecithin and that helps to bind the margarine. And the milk is there for flavour and a lovely creamy mouthfeel. It seems to have a rather yellowish beigey colour which flies in the face of the myth that says margarine was actually black and then dyed yellow, not so. Absolutely. And, and also to add colour, um, you can also add um, carotenoids, which is a form of vitamin A. And that actually gives it that lovely colour. It's the same that gives carrots and tomatoes its rich colour. But what you're saying is that at no stage in the process is it ever black? No. Not at all. I wonder where these things come from here. In fact, they say margarine has a negative impact on our health. It increases the risk of heart disease in women. It lowers the quality of breast milk and increase your cancer risk by five times. I mean, that's all hogwash, really. Absolutely. There's no scientific body of evidence that actually shows any of those that you just mentioned. In fact, if we look at heart disease, margarine contains the vegetable oils omega-3 and 6. And they've actually been proven when you replace your bad fats with omega-3 and 6 to reduce the risk of heart disease. Wendy, how are you doing? It's pretty much done, Michael. Um, it's reached a really nice consistency. The fats have emulsified with the egg yolk and the milk. And we've basically got a liquid form of margarine. What we would do now is then pour this into a cling-filmed um, baking dish and let it set in the fridge. And there you have it, margarine. What I'm going to do here now is just flavor it a little bit. Some freshly ground black pepper, a little pinch of salt, and a nice good squeeze of lemon juice just to give it a nice palatable taste. Give that a bit of a whisk. That's and amazing. And if you make it at home, you can even add some nice and fresh chopped chives, some chopped parsley. Add your own herbs, yeah. Yep. That doesn't look like it'll fatten turkeys, would it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, margarine was invented by a renowned French scientist, and that was actually upon the request of the Emperor, Napoleon III, to basically create a more affordable substitute for butter. And that's actually how it, why it was invented, and it's come a long way since then, as now a healthy alternative Amazing. to butter. Okay, so what you're saying is you'd have to be quite a turkey to believe some of these myths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Great, so this is the margarine you just made, Wendy. Yes. Taste test. Mm. Very good. You added the right amount of salt. Huh? <laughs> A myth busted. Margarine is made of natural ingredients and is not plastic. Your heart needs to be strong to keep up. Flora, for a strong heart today.